This is Lesson 16.5, and the focus is, how can you use coordinate graphs to show mathematical relationships? You know how to use graphs to help solve problems, and you know how to describe numerical relationships between two number patterns. Today you will learn how to represent these relationships on a graph. I want you to think of a situation in which you might want to show a numerical relationship graphically. So, in other words, showing how numbers are related using a graph. What would be a real situation for that? A couple possibilities could be distance over time, for example, how far a car drives um, over a certain period of time, or even the number of dollars earned each day. This table uses number patterns to describe changes in the length and width of a rectangle. Please take a moment to study this table, um, noting the rule. Uh, for the length, it's add 1. For the width, it's always subtract 1. Let x be the length and y be the width. Extend the table and plot the points on a coordinate grid. Then find what is the width when the length is 10. Please pause to create your graph and to find the width when the length is 10. Now please compare your graph to the one on the screen. Here's where the points should be plotted. First length is 1 and the width is 11. So I'm going to extend my grid a little bit, assume it will be up here. 2 and 10, 3 and 9, and 4 and 8. You can use solid dots, of course. Um, on Show Me, I need to use these circles. Hopefully, you're noticing not only a pattern in your line, that there's a straight line forming, but also a pattern in the table, um, the relationship between the length and the width. If I continue plotting my points. They should all fall along the same line. And what you should notice between your x and y coordinates is that the length and the width um, always adds up to 12. So I'm going to go ahead and connect my lines. So to find the width for a length of 10, I can extend my table out. For example, I can add 5 and 6 to my table and follow the rule. I'm subtracting for the width, so I'm counting down. Okay, and I could do that all the way up to 10. However, as we just mentioned, there's also another pattern. And that means that if my length is 10, I need a total of 12. So in this case, my width needs to be 2 to give me 12. So again, the rule here is x plus y equals 12. So when the length is 10, the width will be 2. Now since this table represents the lengths and widths of a rectangle, I want you to think about the following questions. First, given that this table, um, the x and y always adds up to 12, what does this tell you about the rectangle? Think about the rectangle. What does it tell you about all of these rectangles? One thing you might notice that this means that the perimeter is always going to be 24. Because if I take two lengths and two widths and add it up, I'm always going to get 24 no matter what. What do you notice about your graph? Again, hopefully you notice that the points lie in a straight line. This means also that x and y must always be between 0 and 12. So why does it make sense that x cannot be greater than 12? First, you might note that if um, x was bigger than 12, it would be impossible to follow our rule of x plus y equals 12. But also, you can't have a rectangle uh, with a perimeter of 24 if the length is greater than 12. So this is a graph that helps show the mathematical relationship um, between lengths and widths of a rectangle. Let's try one more that you could bring to class tomorrow. Please copy this table into your notebook. Notice this time the rule is to add 1 for x 
and to multiply by 2 for y. x, you're going to start at 0, and again, add 1 each time. y, you're going to begin at 1, and multiply by 2 each time. I want you to plot those points on a graph, and I want you to look at it and see what do you notice about your line and your table. Please bring that to class tomorrow for us to discuss. This is Lesson 16.5. And the focus was, how can you use coordinate graphs to show mathematical relationships?